in the last few months, my portfolio went from 34 stocks to only 16 stocks today. And if you look at the cash position in my portfolio, it did not change that much. That doesn't mean that I was selling these stocks because I wanted to stay in cash. Actually, I invested in other stocks. But if you look at all the stocks that I sold in the past few months, there is one big reason why I sold most of them. Let's start with the obvious. I sold because I wanted to take profits. Yes, I did that with a few stocks. For example, Geo Group, Freeport McMoran. But why I did not sell Meta? Why I did not sell the few shares of Apple I still own? Even though I will say that these companies are expensive today. They are not as undervalued as when I bought them, especially Apple. But still, I'm holding on these companies. What's the difference between Geo Group, Freeport McMoran, and Apple Meta. It's not about technology, not really. It's not because they are in the Magnificent 7 stocks and I believe that holding them is a great idea for this reason. No, that's not it. It's mostly because you have to hold your winners. You have to let your winners run. And looking at how I valued Meta, I was pretty conservative. I did not take into consideration the Metaverse at all. Actually, I gave it a negative value. But now let's say it works, probably it's going to do well. So even though Meta today is overvalued, I don't care if the stock price goes down by 20% next year, 30%. I don't care. Over the long term, I believe it is going to be a good company, a good investment. So what's the difference now between Meta and let's say Freeport McMoran? I always told you that I believe that over the long term, cover prices are going to go up. And I still believe that, but I took profits. It has more to do on how these companies make money. It takes a lot of assets, a lot of capital for a company like Freeport Moran or Geo Group to make money. And the amount of money they make is not even that much. The margins of those companies are very small compared to Meta and Apple. Actually, this concept comes from Warren Buffett. I have been reading the letters of Warren Buffett. I've been watching all the annual meetings. I will say that the most important thing that I learned is these candidates. Why this is such a great business. And actually when Warren Buffett invested in the company, he did not know how great the business was. He believed that he overpaid for the company, but after 20 years, when he looked at the company again and comparing it with other investments that he made, he saw that there is a point of overpaying for a good company. And he agreed with what Charlie Munger said that it's better to buy a good company at a fair price than a poor company at a great price. And I was buying poor companies at a great price. This is what I was attempting to do. And it worked sometimes. With Report Mark Moran, it was a success. Geo Group, it was a success. And of course, GameStop, the greatest success of all. But it is hard to find great companies that you can actually buy at very low prices deep value opportunities are very rare and in many cases you're going to make big mistakes unfi is one of my worst investment mistakes if not the worst icon enterprises i did not see anything good about the economics of the company icon enterprises but i believe that because of the dividends there was a margin of safety and the dividends is gone you will notice that all the companies that i sold most of them are companies that take a lot of capital to make money still antis it is a competitive, capital-intensive, and commoditized industry. Nobody really knows. It is hard for you to know how the car industry is going to be 10 years from now. And it's not because of electric vehicles. Even in the 1980s, one could say the same thing about the auto industry. Nobody knows who are going to be the winners and the losers. Semiconductor industry, the same thing. Whenever you are making an investment, it is always an opportunity cost you're making an investment, there's always another opportunity, another company that you can buy that probably is going to be a better alternative than the one you're making today. So if it is a better alternative, why not invest more in that company? And this is exactly what I did. When I look at the FDJ, which in my opinion is a great company, this company has a mode, it has a monopoly, and it requires little capital to grow. This is a great company. Why not invest more in that? It is undervalued. Why not invest more in such a company instead of me going looking for another Gamble Financial 
another Skywork solutions. It is better to focus on the companies that you know with high probability are going to grow their earnings and they can return those earnings to shareholders and they require little capital to do that. In a way, these companies are running for free. And the best one I can give you, the best example, would be Booking Holdings. It requires a video on its own, but I told you before, the way that the company operates, that they get cash flows from customers beforehand, and it is a liabilities on the balance sheet, but they use that cash to buy back shares. That's how the company is able to return more cash to shareholders than the net income. So the actual real profits of Booking Holdings is higher than what is on the income statement. I don't have a formula. I don't have a number that the returns on invested capital should be 20% for me to make an investment or the returns on equity should be 25% for me to make an investment. I look for margins of 40%. So I don't have any of these numbers. I look at the companies. There can be a company with returns of equity of only 5%, but this company has a monopoly. Nobody is going to come and try to compete with the company. Easiest example I can give you is flight safety that uh, Berkshire Hathaway owns. These companies make simulators for pilot training and it costs a lot of money to make that. Those simulators cost tens of millions of dollars and nobody is going to come and try to compete with that business. So even though the returns on capital itself is low, it can be a good investment. But you have to always consider what is the alternative. If you're making this one investment, why not make an investment in a company that you already own, which is a much better company. If you want to learn more why I'm investing in FDJ, I will recommend you watch this video next. Have a nice day and goodbye.